Hello there, good morning everybody. How are you today? What a lovely day. I've got Bobbin sitting outside in the sunshine on a blanket and it's nice and warm and we're going to go for a long walk when we finish this. Um, hello Sharon and Lynn and Wendy and Sharon and Anne. And I uh, don't see anybody on, on Facebook yet, but I'm sure you're there. Hello Sue. Right, so I've got new fabrics to show you again. And, um, oh hi Jill and hi Anne. We're going to make a little bag. I made a, a big bow bag, a big bow bag, and I'm not sure if it's on YouTube. It might, it might, I, don't, I can't remember. Um, but I thought we'd make a little one. And the fabric I've used for this one, we've, um, it's one of my favourite ones. We've, we've made kits out of this before now. It's the Dutch Heritage, and I've used a coral fabric, which goes with it really well. But I'm going to use one of the new fabrics, excuse me, <clears throat> that you haven't seen yet, that I'm going to show you in a second, and make up um, a similar one this morning. Hi, Jane, Clarissa, Alison, Karen, Patrice, Elizabeth, um, Christine, Alison, Anne-Marie, Teresa and Sheila and Christine and Carla and Deirdre and sorry if I miss anybody. Hi Daisy. I'd, oh, and it's linked to, oh sorry Daisy. I um, hope it all went well. Nice to have you here. Uh, Anne, uh, hello Penny and Joan. Morning Dawn. Alana, hello. Oh, happy birthday to Alana. Happy birthday. I shan't sing. Hi Claire. Hi Helen, Joan, Jeanette, Julie, Wendy. Uh, morning, Kathy. Hi, Vicky from Tweed. She loves bags. I love making bags. I don't. I like. To, I like the. I never said it. Before, I like the figuring out. I like the right. So, how many of these belt loops do I need, and how long do I need that to be, and how wide do I need it to be, and how many pockets do I want? And that's that's what I like. That's what I like about bag making. Um, hello, Joyce in Melbourne, in Florida. I didn't know there was a Melbourne in Florida. We have a Melbourne in the UK, and there's a Melbourne in Australia. I suppose there's one all over the place. Um, hello, Karen and Deirdre, Jackie, Diane, Leslie, Sadiq. Hello, um, and Andrea. I'm very good, thank you very much. Hello, sleepy cat. Um, Amanda, hello to you. Right, we've got some fabulous fabrics. The church wall is only just strike, it's two minutes late. Honestly, tut tut tut. Now this is the um, the curved side bag that is a download on the website. So you get your full instructions and you get a pattern for it. Um, and I've made this one in the Willow Bow tapestry fabric. It's a William Morris. And the lining, I've used Jinky fabric in natural. There it is. I didn't show you this properly the other day. Jinky fabric in natural. Let me just make sure that's switched off. Um, because I thought the colour and the texture work really well. Now on this one, I've used a hidden magnetic snap. I can't get any until next week. But if you wanted to make it with a regular magnetic snap, you, at the point on the instructions where I said to fit the snap, you just fit it on the outside, on the right side rather than the wrong side, like you would normally do. But hopefully we're going to get these in next week. So I think that's quite a nice way of closing it. What it also means, because of the way that the bag's constructed, there's no turning gap. So you could make it reversible. So if you wanted to go for maybe a plain sage colour um, or a cream colour canvas, maybe leave the patch pocket off it, um, then you can reverse them. We do have the handmade tags on the website. Um, they're packs of 10, but it's a really good, useful size. But the reason I wanted to show it to you isn't just because I love it and it goes over your shoulder. It's actually you can make the strap longer if you want to. Um, you might need extra fabric to do that. So that's a download. You get the pattern and your full pictorial instructions. But we have some new tapestries in. And the thing with these tapestries, as we're selling out, because they've been so popular, um, we, can't get, we can't get them back. There was um, the crochet one sold out almost straight away. And if you're on a waiting list for that, I'm sorry, we ordered it, never arrived. Um, so we need to chase up the, um, uh, our suppliers on Monday and see what happens there. Um, Irene, really? Did you tell me what suspenders will be doing in July? <laughs> so I I've got pictures in my mind now, Irene. Um, <laughs> yeah, can you can you retype that one? Do you mean Susie? Um, hi, Chris. Um, enjoy your coffee, Bloodwin. Hello, Bloodwin's ordered it. Looking forward to making it good. Um, now, when you do download it, oh, thanks, Sarah, uh, the curved side tote bag, we're calling it. Um, when you do download it, can you sign in to your account if you've got an account on the website? Not Half Yard Club, nothing to do with that. It's the Debbie Shaw Sewing website because when you're logged in, all of the downloads are saved to your account. 
Um, you should receive an email as well, but it's quite handy to have them on your account. So if you're not signed up, then just sign up. Um, we don't bombard you with stuff. We don't charge you anything. You'll get a newsletter maybe once a month or six weeks or something like that. Um, and that's that's it. But it just means that whatever you order from us, you'll, you'll be able to keep a record of it. If you check out as a guest, you've got no record of what you've ordered until it arrives. Um, so just if you can create an account and log in, then that, that would that would be helpful and helpful for you as well as for us as well. So let me show you the new tapestries that we do have, which would look uh, equally well. If you're going to use um, any other fabric for this one, the measurements on the instructions are for 60 inch wide, which is the width of the canvases that we have on the website, the canvases and the um, and the tapestries. So if you're just using a regular quilting cotton, I'd order an extra half metre because this is cut on the bias, so you've got quite a long strip of bias binding that you're cutting from the fabric. Look at this though! Um, so, isn't that gorgeous? It's gorgeous! Um, love the colours on this one. It is kind of reversible. I, I mean, I do prefer that side, but if you wanted to make a bag with a flap out of the, out of the wrong side, there's nothing to say you can't. Nothing. Oh, that would be perfect for knitters, Fee. Fee! Oh, Gary! If you're still watching, because he's going out in a minute, you know the surgical things that Fee sent me? Can you bring them down? I'm going to use them. Thank you, Fee. I've never, never seen anything so big. Honestly. <laughs> when I, <laughs> I showed Gary this morning, I said, look what Fee sent me. And he just went, oh dear. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, hi, Leanna. Um, wow, it's gorgeous, says Sue. I know, it's absolutely beautiful. So can you imagine the curved side bag, but made out of this, would look beautiful. Um, I'm working on some, um, remember my Poppins bag with the tubular frame? Got the frame, just need to make the, the pattern. It might be a while because I've, I'm up to here with bags at the moment for kits and things for Great and Craft. Um, Susie. <laughs> Susie, not suspenders, Irene. What's she doing in July? I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember. I shall have a look and let you know. Some of them we haven't organised yet. Um, she will be doing some cosmetic bags in that quilt as you go technique. And then she's got some projects of her own. But I don't, I don't know what. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. Date on YouTube says the 13th. Oh, I altered that this morning. Oh, copy and paste, honestly. Yeah, so I, I think that is absolutely gorgeous. But we have more. How rich is that? That would make an amazing carpet bag. So yeah, oh, I was saying, wasn't I? Yes, it, it will, it'll be a while, but they are in the pipeline. Um, Right, I just need, just need to say hello to my granddaughter. Fiona! Verena Ray, hello, what are you doing this morning? Are you waving back? Hello, hello, I'm going to get you. <laughs> going to see you soon, hopefully. That's my granddaughter who's watching this morning. Oh, uh, Just going to get the website up so I can see some prices for you. So again, it's 100, I think it's 100, 140 wide. Can't remember, I'll have a look. Oh, I'm not going on Amazon. You won't find them there. <laughs> I think I've clicked off my website. Just have a look at that for a minute while I try and get the website back up again. Uh, no, 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 oh, no, no, that's half your club. Don't want that one. Um, there be sure sewing. That's the one. So if you go to new arrivals, oh, oh swirly line, just updating. Um, they're New World Tapestries. This is William Forrest Green. thought it was William Morris. And the other one was uh, Wildflowers. So that's Wildflowers. And we've got another one, <coughs> which is Houndstooth. And they're all £7.99 for half a metre. Which I think is so cheap in price, not quality. I mean, they're, they're heavy duty. So if you are covering a chair, you know, your dining chairs or something like that, or you're doing a bit of upholstery. Um, a big cushion cover, I don't know about cushion covers, I'd say upholstery, but bag making, absolutely perfect for you. And when you consider, you could probably make 
well, two really large tote bags, really large, out of uh, half a metre. Uh, and if you're covering a, a dining chair, easily make two dining chairs after half a metre. So I think it's a, a, I think it's a really affordable, really affordable fabric. But it's, it's just gorgeous. I love the selvages on them as well. You've got pretty selvages. So you could use that as, um, as part of your bag making, use it as a decorative trim. Hello, Kaz, she loves me top. Kaz and Leslie, thank you very much. Next. Um, morning, Carol, from Sunny Isle of Man. Um, she's quilting, lovely. Can you remember if you've made a medium to large craft caddy? Not off the top of my head, I haven't. No, I don't think I've made a large one. I've made ones that fit A4 um, uh, cutting mats, but I don't think I've made anything any bigger than that. <laughs> Blinkers off, Laura. Off you go. Right, that's those three. But we've got some new collections for you as well. I'll show you these two first because we've only got these two from this particular collection. Um, and it's spring, isn't it? Look at the weather outside. It's gorgeous. Well, it is here anyway. So these are the kind of fabrics you want to be using. Look at those. Um, so let me just get those up again. Hi, Margaret. No, I'm not going to the Stitch Festival, I'm afraid, Lindsay. I haven't got time. Um, these are, oh no, they're not. These are eight pounds for half a meter. It's poppy cotton. So it's really lovely, co um, lovely quality cotton. Uh, this one is Ladybird's Yellow. Got a little Ladybird's. And this one is Love You, Love You More in the Garden Yellow as well. So we've just got those two, but I think they are gorgeous. If you have a, a gardener or you're just thinking spring, or you want to wish somebody good luck. It's like little ladybirds on there. That's four leaf clovers. Oh, is it dull in Devon? Oh, it's sunny here. Kim, we could be sitting outside. It's that warm. We could be sitting outside today. Well, we don't really sit outside. I sit outside. Kim Gardens. Poppycorn is the brand name, Deirdre. It's the, it's the manufacturer's name. Um, good morning, everyone. Anyone around Rutland Water today to give a thumbs up to the young people on the 17 mile sponsored walk for the D of E? Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll do. I'll do that when we're done. <clears throat> Sadiq's handmade bag tutorial. Sadiq, have a look on my on the YouTube channel while you're there. I've got about five hundred uh, tutorials. Most of them are bags. So yeah, there, there's there's loads of them on there. Uh, missed me by an hour last year. Oh, sorry about that. Time changes. So last week, last Saturday of the month, which would be the 30th, I think, I think it'll be the last Saturday of the month. Uh, hi, Mandy. Lovely and sunny in Lancashire. Oh, good. Right, now these, I'm going to use one of these to make my bag this morning. But I love the colours on these. I, I think they're just, I'll show you in a set when I've laid them out nicely. Like that there we go look at those aren't they beautiful so these are Wyndham fabrics and I'll, I'll just take you through them quickly hi Mandy um, we have Wyndham fabrics, laurel spring dotty blue grey and flow navy um, dainty blue uh, that one's bliss blue and that's Blooming Blocks Navy. And the one that I'm going to, to use is this one, but I'm going to use it with a chambray for my lining and my backing because it, it's, it's got a print of, of like texture on the background. So it's not printed plain, it's, it's a, a texture. I think it's really lovely. Aren't they gorgeous, Anne-Marie? Um, their colours are amazing. And I think if you've got a very soft yellow or a pale pink or peach, I'm going to use as the lining on this one. Um, I think they just go so well together, even with the plainer ones. If you added, that's lovely, isn't it? Just, they're just nice colours, nice colours. Um, yeah, and the blocks, and but they're beautiful. So if you're quilting, what a lovely collection that's going to be. And I don't think that you're going to need... Um, I don't think that you're going to need any kind of 
um, blenders or any plain fabric because these ones are plain enough to break up the three patterned ones. So you imagine that as a quilt as you see it there. Every one of the designs really stands out. If you put two prints next to each other, they tend to get lost a little bit where they join. Um, but when you break it up with these plainer ones, I think that works really, really well. The lining, who said that in the bag? Sorry, I saw that and then it's gone. I use Jinky fabric, which is a linen blend, uh, linen rayon blend, this one. I think I showed you this the other week. So it looks like linen. Um, but it's a rayon blend, so it's more affordable and, um, and it doesn't crease as easily. And the only reason I use that one is because I just thought it goes so well with the background of the Willow Bow tapestry. I just thought that worked really well. So maybe a canvas would work, or you could use plain cotton. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, natural looking like that. You could use calico if you wanted to. Um, and you don't need as much as you do for the outer because obviously the outer, the handles are made um, with bias binding, so it's cut on the bias, so you need a large piece of fabric. But you'll only need half a metre of lining fabric to go with the bag. So, yes, gorgeous. And uh, fabrics, uh, Supercat says, is it Joe? Says, uh, Wyndham fabrics are super lovely, so very nice, good quality. They are, they, they, they're really lovely, particularly if you're quilting or if you're making something to wear out of them. Uh, right, let's pop these away and then we've got some art gallery fabrics as well. I'm talking about premium quality fabrics, throwing the lot at you here, aren't I? So those are the Wyndham. It's not very often we actually go for the whole collection, but couldn't decide between these, so I thought we'd go for the whole lot. Right, I'll just fold those away. Sun and cloud, 10 degrees at the moment in Derby. The label, Amanda, is a handmade label which we sell on the website. Just says handmade and you just stitch it. I did actually stitch that and glue it because I didn't think it got many stitch holes in it, but we sell them in packs of 10. Um, so I think if you have a look under the new arrivals and scroll down a bit, you'll see them there. And they're PU, they're not leather. Hello, Louise in Halifax. Uh, the f yeah, Susan, hopefully we'll get them in next week. Hopefully next week. I, I have been promised, but um, don't want to put them on the website just yet, just in case they don't turn up. You know what it's like. All right, these are so fun, so retro. Our gallery fabrics have that... Can you hear that? They're, they're so smooth. They're almost... I was going to say crisp, but that makes them sound stiff, and they're not at all. Um, reason being, they'll use a very fine thread, cotton thread, it's all cotton, um, but then make them very, very dense, so you get high denning, and it just gives that wonderful smoothness. So, I've got three in this collection. Let me get them up. Let me get them up here. Um, Flower Bloom, Growing Path and sunbound and rhythmic expression. They just, they just take me back these kind of colors. Um, I think they're quite, I think they're quite seventies, the colors and the designs, which is very fashionable at the moment as well. It's gorgeous. 44 inches wide. And remember if you do order anything, they, they will come off the roll uh, of the bolt in one piece. So if you wanted to make a pair of curtains and you needed five meters, then order 10 units and they'll come all in one piece. Aren't they fun though? I think they're just gorgeous. And those are, I think they're eight pounds for half a meter. Which is good for art gallery fabrics, isn't it? Now you might have seen on the website already, we've put up the, um, the tickets for the open weekend. Um, so just like we did last year, It'll be the 20th and 21st of July, so Saturday and Sunday. And I think I did explain the other day when I was here, um, we are charging £20 a ticket. And I shall explain why, because you do get your money back. We, we, we had probably maybe 150, 180 people come last year and it worked really well because we thought if it's going to be really busy we don't want everybody turning up at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning because I mean it's a big place but it's not big enough to cope with more than about 25 people at once so we thought the best thing to do would be to sell tickets selling them rather than just booking them so we know you're going to come 
Um, and then we've spaced it out at two hour intervals. So it'll be 10, two and f 10 o'clock, 10, 12 and two. OK, um, on both days. So if you book your ticket, when you arrive, if you buy something, you'll get your £20 back. If you don't want to buy anything, we'll give you your £20 back. Um, but if you just wanted to come and have a look around and say hello, there'll be me and Kim there. Pat will be there. Um, Tyler and Kat might come over. Gary normally makes an appearance. Um, my sister helped out last year, so hopefully she's going to be there as well. I might bring my niece and my great niece over as well to help out because it was really busy um so yeah there's lots of us there will be the juki guys there as well so they'll have juki sewing machines and demonstrations and special authors on machines so we might just give something away with every machine and they might just do a bit of a discount for you but not supposed to have the event um so if you've got anything specific that you want them to write, I think they brought about eight machines last year, overlockers, all kinds of stuff. Um, but if there's anything specific you want to see, then do let me know. And we've also got Susie Duncan there for both days and she's going to be demonstrating. I don't know what, um, but she's going to bring some of her patterns and she's going to sit and sew all day. So you can sit and chat with Susie and see what she's doing there as well. Um, I'm missing your comments there as well. I've been rambling on. Rhythmic as you know, it is, isn't it, Deirdre? Um, you'll need more than half a metre for the outer of the bag, so I'd order a metre, Veronica, for the tapestry bag because you've got that. You'll need at least 29 inches of three inch wide bias binding. So by the time you've cut your bag pieces out, you'll need extra to get the, because it takes quite a lot of fabric. You'll have a bit left over, you can make a purse out of it. Um, so, yeah, so that's the open day. So, what I also wanted to say is if you do come, you don't have to be there bang on say 12 o'clock and we'll kick you out at two because you've got your two hour slot if you get there a bit earlier don't sit and wait in the car and if you get if you want to stay a little bit later then do hang around it's just so that we know approximately how many people are going to be coming through the door it's a, it's a safety thing more than anything we do have um uh, disabled access as well so there is a lift there that you can fit a wheelchair in if uh, if that's an issue for you because we are on the first floor uh hi cynthia uh what show is this? Oh, it's the open day we're talking about, Anna, at our premises. We're in Buckminster, which is in Leicestershire, not too far from Grantham. Grantham will be the nearest uh, railway station. Um, I think she, she's keeping it short, Jean. My, my niece and my great niece, my great niece had her hair that's never been cut, cut basically off for charity. Um, and then my niece who had waist length hair, her mum, had hers all chopped off as well, but they've kept it. Uh, I did cotton, Jo. Cotton. She said, what is the best fabric to use for um, oven mitts? Um, not polyester, not, not man-made because it might get hot. Um, but yeah, any kind of cotton or canvas or, yeah, cotton or canvas, just natural fabrics. Blood ring, kill time in the pub. There is a pub over the road that does really nice uh, lunches, really nice food if you wanted to go there. Uh, hi, Lynn. Hello, Margaret in Melbourne in Australia. We've had a Melbourne in Florida this morning, Margaret. I said there was one in Australia. There's one over here as well. Hi, Cynthia. Have I met Mr. Finch? I don't know who Mr. Finch is, Cathy. Who's Mr. Finch? Uh, greetings from blah, 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 blah. Right, I think that's that up to date. A son-in-law is under going back. So, oh, Leslie, let's all, let's all send positive thoughts for Leslie's son. He's having back surgery at the moment be fine they'll be fine they know what they're doing okay should we make a bag so if you just joined us it's a little bow bag i have made a large bow bag in the past but i can't remember where i made it so it might have been a pattern for crafters companion or it might have been on youtube i can't remember um but i just thought i'd, I'd revisit and make a smaller version of it an english artist no i haven't kathy i haven't met him um Moon thread. Moon thread's good, Deirdre. Moon thread is good. I will be perfectly honest with you. My DX7 doesn't like moon thread. We've got in there. I've got Gutterman in there at the moment. Um, but it's it, it's it, we wouldn't sell anything that wasn't good quality. Uh, my my straight stitch machine is fine with moon thread. Um, what do you think? I use um, I use Gutterman a lot. I use Orofil mainly because I just like the finish that it gives. 
and uh, bring a carer to have to pay as well. No, Erica. It's, it's only so that we know how many people are coming. <coughs> so if you put a note, when you place your order, it's just like placing an order for fabric or anything else on the website, there's a place where you can put customer notes. If you put a note in there saying, I'm bringing a carer, then we'll tick off another place, so just, to say, just so we know how many people are coming. So same with two of you. If two of you are coming together, you don't need to pay twice. Just put a note saying there's two of you coming. Like when Chris came last year and Irene came, um, just let me know. It's, it's purely so we know how many people are coming throughout the day. We're not charging you to make a profit at all, so because you, you get that back. It's purely so we know how many people. So yeah, just if there's two of you coming, pay for one ticket and put a note in there so that we know there's two people. Um, that's okay, Joe. Any fabric with oranges? Oh, do you know Brenda? We, oh, I don't know. I don't know if we've still got any stock. We did have a cotton poplin with oranges on it. Um, I can't remember what it was called. But it was a while ago, so I'm not sure if we've still got stock of that one. Um, Anne uses moon thread and a Janome and a Rover locker. Singer Heavy Duty doesn't like moon thread, but Laura's other machines are fine. <laughs> no, I'm not making the green bag, Susan. I'm selling you that one. That's a, that's a pattern download on the website. Um, so this is what we've got i've started cutting up bits already it's a little bit wider than the one i made this morning purely because i thought it needs to be a little bit wider so only an inch so that's my fabric and this measures 13 inches by 12 inches i think let me double check on that one yep 13 inches that way and 12 inches that way. My lining is the peach um, chambray and my contrast fabric is the blue chambray. I'm, I'm, I used a fat quarter of that as I ordered in the lining in the same fabric. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do here, oh, thank you very much, cab skins. Hmm. First of all, So that's the bottom of my bag, the 13 inch bit. That's the top of my bag, which is 12. I'm going to measure two inches down from the front and the back pieces and cut a length off. Come off, like so. And then, so I've got two pieces there, front and back. I've cut two, two, in, two and a half, let me measure that, two and a half inch pieces from my contrast fabric by the same width. I know that's a little bit longer, but I'll, I'll cut that down to size. So that's going to go in between there like that. I've cut two straps and these measure four inches by 17 inches. And I'll sew this in a second, but I've I've done I've done this a hundred times. You've seen this before. Um, so we we sew we iron the outer piece. Of the oh goodness sake, Deborah! Take the long edges to the centre and press, and then fold the whole thing in half and press again. And then you top stitch down each side, like that. So that's going to go on the top of the bag, like so. And then I'll need these little belt loops. And all I've done for here is just cut a strip of fabric. This is going to be too long. Four inches wide, the same as this. So uh, fold to long edges to the centre, then in half, press, just like you would do with a bag handle. And I'm going to cut these up to make two and a half inch strips to go across here. I'll need four of those. And then my long tie is the width of the fabric. So this is 44 inches. I'll just take the selvages off there by three inches wide, like that. So first up, I'm going to just sew down the other side of the handle. Oh no, no we won't, we'll do that in a second. Let's do this. So let's take the two contrast pieces and cut that to the exact size. So that should be 13 inches across by two and a half inches. I'll just trim that down a little bit. And 
and don't need those for now I'm going to measure three inches from each side and that is where my little belt loops are going to go so one two three one two three so just cut those down to the same width as the contrast fabric and I'm going to put a pin just to hold those in place and one at the bottom oh we've got Lisa morning Lisa you're right um, and then the same on this side and I'm pinning towards the centre because I'm going to put the next layer of fabric on the top and I don't want to sew over the pins. So one, two, three, four. And we'll do the same with the second piece here. So let's cut my two and a half, half strips of that. And three inches from the edge. Pin at the top, pin at the bottom. You could use a little bit of, um, of glue if you've got a glue stick to hold it in place just on the ends because we're going to thread the other fabric through here. The tie will go through here. So another one there. Yes, Anna, if you go to the website, debbieshawsewing.com and click on events, um, I can show you actually, I think see if I can get the website up so if you go to the home page here we go and events um, we've still got a couple of places for the 23rd of March with Susie Duncan um, she's making that cushion cover or you'll be making that cushion cover uh, in either blues or pinks and that's Liberty fabric so I think there's a couple of places still available there and then just keep scrolling down. We've got Gina B. She's coming up on the 28th, I'm thinking 28th of April. If you wanted to book that, just keep scrolling down until you get to that bit where you can click on it. And we've got Tilly coming up. Oh, Susie's on the 11th of May. Not sure what we're doing yet there. Might, might be the quilted you go bag. 19th of May, Tilly's coming. We're going to do a journal cover. It won't be that journal cover. That's just an idea of the kind of things that Tilly does. But you can book that now if you wish. More sewing with um, Susie on the 7th. And then as you scroll down again, there's our open day. Um, so this will take you on a link to a map, uh, Google Maps of where it is. And then when you get down to shop now, you can either go for the 20th or the 21st so click on shop now and then choose an option of the time you want to come 10 12 or 2 and then just go go through to payment so that's that's how we do that one couldn't be easier but if you go to open days and keep an eye on that because we're getting more and more open days coming up um, throughout the year as well which is quite interesting right so let's pin that there I won't be able to do a YouTube video on this uh, for a while if I ever get around to it. Um, but if you, on Facebook and on YouTube, as you've picked up on there, it will be there forever. So if you're watching back again, at least you can fast forward through the talky bits if it's just the instructions that you need. Okay, then we'll need, let's do one side at a time. Let's take the bottom of the bag and the top of the bag. And then flip that over. No, Tilly's isn't live as yet. I need to confirm with her. So um, we penciled in the date. So I think it'll all be okay. I just need to double check with her. And then we'll sew across the top using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this is why I've, I didn't pin right on the edge because I'm sewing over the edges of the straps now. Right down the side and we'll chop that off there and then that goes right sides together over the top of the bottom section of the bag and we'll 
say that one. There we go. So that's that. So let's pop out the pins. Um, I'll give her a ring actually, Sarah, um, or I'll message her because she's supposed to be doing my seamless Sunday on the 24th, launching the um, launching her club. So I'll have a chat with her. Um, so that's that. And then we'll do the same with the opposite side. So again, that's already been pinned in place. So facing downwards. And so across there. You can pin this all the way down if you like, but I found it easier not to, to be honest. All right. If you have a fabric that you want to quilt, by the way, that would be um, like that, then a little bit on the top. That would be a nice thing to do. Let's move the strip. There we go. So that right sides together over the top, and we'll sew down there. We could put more little um, belt loops on there if you wanted to. I think this is going to be enough, and you would be able to close this with a magnetic snap. I'm just going to, what have I done there? Ah, there's a pin. That's why I don't sew over pins. Right, let's take that out. Let me put the iron on. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay. Now, if you wanted to top stitch, I think we should top stitch. Let's give this a press first. And I think then I'll put some wadding on the back and then we'll top stitch it through the wadding. I think that would look really nice. And I'm use, I'm not using a fusible on this one. I'm using the, uh, the sewing fleece, you know, my new favorite thing. Oh, which I put on the floor, this one. So this is um, it's about a quarter of an inch thick. It's incredibly soft. It's very white, isn't it? It looks like snow. Oh, blinding. Um, it's incredibly soft and it's lovely to quilt with as well. Right. So let's give this a press. Things always look better with a bit of steam and art and heat, don't they? Uh, Lots well, so if we got. I need ideas for quick popular makes for a charity craft fair. Intermediate learning about my week old DX7. Oh, lovely. A baby DX7. <laughs> Bobbing sunbathing outside, Liana. She's enjoying the sunshine. She's got a blanket outside the door. Yes, I have made a ham, Brenda. There's a ham in my so useful. I can't remember if it's so useful or sewing room accessories. Might be sewing room accessories, but there is a ham in there, which I specifically designed. So I just missed a bit there. Um, for bag making, because you can make them in any shape you like. So the one that I made was kind of that shape with a square base, so you can just push it into the bottom of a bag um, and press it. Where did I see that bit that I'd missed? There we go. Uh, and what I also did with my hams was to put like a little, um, almost like a flap, like a cover so you can put your hand under it. Because I thought when, when you hold a ham, there's a risk in a, you could catch your fingers. But if you slide your hand underneath something, you're holding it from the top. But yeah, I can't remember, I can't remember what book. Uh, autumn collection will be out later on this year, Alison. I think it's coming out in autumn. So I've already done that one. Um, so yes, we have done that. It's a bit late that one, isn't it? Yeah, we have done one. 
um, sawdust blodwin. Go to a pet shop and filled it with sawdust. Right, so I'm going to put some, some of this wadding on the back because it is um, a sewing one. What have I done with that? I did bring down some 505 spray but I don't know what I've done with it. Can anybody see my 505 spray? So we'll just sew it in. <laughs> I would normally use 505 spray but I'm putting some stitches over here anyway so let's just sew it in. Um, and again at this point if you wanted to quilt would be nice. I'd, I'd only quilt kind of up to here so I don't know if that would work for you. So let's chop around here. Lovely fabric this isn't it? it? It just goes so well with that chambray as well, I do like it. Uh, we do a, um, a lemon coloured chambray too, that would, that would look nice. It's just nice for spring. Oops, okay so need to do that with both sides. Like so. Makes it nice and poofy, this as well. It's, it's nice. nice. Oh, sewing room accessories, the ham. Thank you. Couldn't remember which one. There we go. So, almost done there. Right. And then I'm just going to top stitch just alongside the seam there. It is nice, isn't it, Lisa? It's one, one of my favourite ones, the new ones. So I'm making the stitch length a little longer. And just top stitch there. And along the other side. Elaine's off out for a birthday lunch. Happy birthday, Elaine. Have a lovely day. Right, I am just about out of bobbin thread, so chat amongst yourselves while I just fill this up, won't you? Uh, oh, with the open days and the workshops, by the way, um, there's no club member discount on those, I'm afraid. But you do still get your discount when you come in. And in fact... Uh, if you do come at any of the open days, you will leave with a 15% discount voucher, which you can use any time on the website. The fish fabric, uh, sorry I didn't see you on ask that, is my next fabric range, which is due out in, I think it's the end of May. Uh, it's called A Day at the Sea. It's a collection of five this time. And we will be putting it on pre-order on the website when we can get around to doing it. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. It's all my sketches. Oh, my well, watercolour paintings. And it's not entirely accurate, but based around a little holiday we had a couple of years ago in um, Appledore. So not so much that you'd recognise any of the images, but that was the, that was the inspiration behind it. Okay, down you go. So again, just top stitching across each side, about a, a quarter of an inch away from the seam. And just along there. I think it's just a nice finishing touch. Gives you a, a professional finish when you see a little bit of top stitching, I think. making a back carol. Right, now these handles are going to go facing downward. Got to sew that one first. So fold it in half to the centre, in half again, sew down each side. Kimberly, the, the wadding is uh, sewing, sewing 
if you search sewing fleece I can't remember exactly what it's called but it's a sewing polyester fleece on the website right so that's going to go facing downwards over where I put the, uh, the little belt loops and I shall pop a couple of clips in there so make sure the strap isn't twisted while we bring it up to the other side here the same on this side and fold that around like that to there And I'm just going to sew across the ends of those to hold them in place. Oh, Melanie's got a mojo back. Oh, good. Can't have you without your mojo. And that one. And same on this one. So again, just make sure those straps aren't twisted as you do it. Right, and I'm going to use one side as a template to cut out two lining pieces. And this is the pink chambray. I love this chambray fabric. Let's get the board up. Just stand up for this. So just trim across through through both layers. I'm just cutting out the same shape. Actually, let's make this half an inch longer. Because then we'll get a nice little border around the top. and across the bottom okay 640 would be fine Sharon absolutely whatever you've, you've got to, to hand really then we'll take the lining pieces and sew the tops together to the outer bag Still using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And the same on that side. sound like we're revving up a little bit here there we go so I've got that and that we'll pop those right sides together and sew all the way around leaving a turning up somewhere in the lining so it would be nice if all of these seams matched up. Not the end of the world if they don't, they're going to have a tie wrapped around them. But if those all match, then job well done. All right, so right sides together, Penny. So yes, best to best sides. So let's match up the seam at the edge here. And I'm going to push those seam allowance upwards They'll want to go upwards anyway because of the um, because of the wadding, and I'm just going to kind of make those seams match as I come down because it does look nice when it all matches. And then we'll sew all the way around. You might want to lengthen your stitch a little bit when you're sewing over wadding like this because it just the friction does tend to um, slow it down a little bit. So again, match up the side seams here. That's where I, I like to start because that's the bit that I want to match. 
you can stick a pin in the seam if you like and then as I come down to this bit just make sure they line up you can ease them a little bit if they don't not so much that you're pulling the bag out of shape but you can kind of manipulate them a little bit so that you make sure that they they match and we'll get stretched across the bottom the seam allowance is actually a little bit wider than a quarter of an inch now I don't know why but there you go using the edge of the foot won't make any difference all right and then we'll go around the lining and what I like to do with the lining is to make the seam allowance just a little bit bigger because um, when you consider you've got a thickness here now so the outer bag the inside of the outer bag is going to be smaller than the size of the lining because the lining has been cut to the same size as the outer so if you just taper the stitches very slightly so you're only maybe a sixteenth of an inch smaller you'll find that the lining will sit better inside the bag up to you where you want to leave a turning gap you can leave it in the base you can leave it in the side less likely to be seen if you leave it in the side so I think we'll do that not that anyone is going to be peering into your bag you know but nice to have it looking neat just in case they do so down there let's turn that around so there's my turning gap and whoop, down we go so am I missing some of your comments Working out bag size and starting out how much material needed. Um, I could, I'll, I'll put some thought into that one, Stephanie, because it's, it's one of those, um, I just do it all in my head. So I'd have to figure out how to explain it. The wadding that I'm using, I, I love it. It's so soft. Is Let me show you. So I've just moved. Oh, what am I doing over there? Move myself out of the way. Uh, and again, if you go to the website, if you put fleece in, should come up. Um, high loft volume, that's the one. High loft volume sewing fleece, and it's quite wide. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's a, it's a metre and a half wide. You get quite a big piece um, for six pounds there. So that's the sewing one. Right. Uh, okay, so we're going to pull open the bag as it's not fused. I'm just going to make sure I get one. That's it. Sometimes, if, you, if your fleece isn't fused, as I'm pulling that apart, I might get the outer pieces going to one side. I don't want that. So I want to have both of the seams, the side seam and the, the base seam, sitting on top of each other okay and I'll stick a pin in there and then this is the way that you do it properly I shall do this only once you'll see why in a minute I'm just gonna let's, let's do hmm, what should we do I'm just gonna do an, an inch and a half inch and a half and split the difference inch and a quarter from the point there and draw a line across here if I can find a pen, I'll draw a line across there. Byra will do. And then so. And then we'll do the same on all four corners. And your inch and a quarter will come from where the stitches are not from the end of the fabric from where the stitches are and then we'll chop that off leave yourself a seam allowance don't cut across the line and then we'll do the same on all of the other corners so I'm just going to open this out again just to make sure that the two outer pieces aren't together when you've done this a few times you will gauge where your inch and a quarter is or whatever size or you can use the measurements on your throat plate I'm not worried about which direction the seams are going in at this point hi Zach then we'll do the same on the lining pieces 
So side seam sit over base seam. Squish the seams in the opposite direction for a that's what, that's what you should do really. One and a quarter inches from the end. And the same on this one. And so straight across. And then we'll snip across. those bits out of the way. Then we turn the right side out and hope that everything's worked. Oh, Zach's on um, on Facebook, Kathy, just saying hi to Zach. And let's push out those corners there. Let's sew the opening closed. So just pull the sides away from each other to make the seam allowance curl in and then we'll sew across there. If I'm going a bit fast, remember these are these videos are going to be on Facebook and YouTube forever. So you can go back and make note of the measurements and um, stop and fast forward and rewind and everything. And pop that inside. Now because I made the lining half an inch bigger, I'm now going to have a little border around the top. You should get a quarter of an inch border. And because I'm, I sewed with the seams upwards, that border will be padded. Whoops, I hope I don't need my ruler anymore because that's on the floor. Okay, so let's fold that over there. And that over there. Just make sure it's even all the way around. That looks nice. I'm going to give it a quick spray because I still haven't descaled my iron so I've got no steam. And Oh hi Kathy. Kathy's a new Half Yard Club member. How are you getting on? Welcome along. I decided whether you could have square in advance so what you're doing now is sewing across the corner. Um, I, I don't really. I, cutting out a square or sewing across the corner doesn't really make any difference. You get exactly the same effect. It's just different techniques to the same end really. Um, when I made this up this morning I wasn't sure if I was going to actually square off the bottom. So it was a bit of an afterthought after I've sewn it together. I thought no we need squaring off. So I've just done it in the same way. Right then I'm going to top stitch along the top. The bag behind me on on the left. This one that is my new fabric. This is coming out in May which we're putting on pre-order. It's called A Day at the Sea. Now I'm just going to top stitch just underneath that, um, whoops, no that one, just underneath the seam, make sure the handles are up, underneath the seam rather than on the seam because I, I find I can be neater that way. Let's fold that under there, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch but it still looks nice. Just keep folding that, I know I've pressed it but it's fighting back. back to the beginning and then handle up as you're doing that right and then the final thing we need to do is to make up the strap or the tie so I'll just cut off those little loose ends again you could put a magnetic snap into the lining to fasten if you wanted to do that as your um, when you cut out the lining, do it at that stage, not, not now. Uh. <laughs> so that's that. That's nice as it is actually, isn't it? But we're going to put a tie through. So again, I've cut this to the width of fabric by three inches. 
Then I'm going to fold this in half right, uh, right, right sides together and so leaving a turning gap in the middle somewhere but I'm also going to point off the ends. So I'm going to go to diagonal line a 45 degree from the point there and then sew down there. So right from the corner just up to there. See, see this is where I was using your turny thing that you bought me. <laughs> but I think I've got a knitting needle. It'll be alright for this one. It's not too bad to turn through this one. I'm not going to be here for half an hour trying to do it. So somewhere... Oh, I'll go a bit further. In, in the middle, somewhere, we're going to leave a turning gap. And you'll only need two or three inches. So I know that's the middle because it's folded, look. Skip that along. And go back. I am turning a tube because Fee bought me a tool, or sent me a tool, which is amazing. I forgot to bring it down with me. I was using it this morning. Mind you, a bit of a scary looking tool, to be honest. I shall show you on Wednesday what I got. Right, and then again when I come to the end, just 45 degree angle. And then let's snip. And snip. Right, and then hopefully I won't be here till next Wednesday trying to do this. <laughs> so, here we go. Um, no, he's gone out, Andrea. He's not in this morning. He's gone, actually, he's gone to the tip. So let's push the end of that in. Yes, that is sticking in my tummy. Whoops. And turn that through to the turning gap. And I'll push out the point while I'm there as well. And then same from the opposite end. And you, who says, is that you, Alan? You've got another, you've got another name. Oh, I hope you're all right. Uh, Yvonne should have gone away for the weekend. We're not feeling too good. So it's going to be doing this bag. Oh, nice. I'm glad you like it. Um, let's turn. There we go. So push out the point. Pull through back to the ironing board bit of best press <laughs> done it see lisa oh you should see my tool you know the um i think the surgical things i don't know what they're called and they're you've like got a scissor handles on one end but it's got a, a grip on the other and you, you click them so they grab onto things fee sent me some that are that big yes yeah, so when I showed Gary this morning, he just went, oh dear, oh dear. Right, let's press this with the, the hemostats, that's the one. Yeah, I've got a huge, I've got huge hemostats. Extended forceps, thanks V. they are amazing, thank you so much. I'm just really kicking myself for leaving them down there. Leaving them down there with the 505. Um, what time are we? It's 12 past three. So I've got an appointment at one o'clock. Well, I have a meeting at one o'clock today. Uh, okay. So when you've done this, you could sew all around the edge, and that's going to close that opening as you go. Uh, just for speed's sake, because we're running out of time, I'm not going to do that now. So I will have an opening in the back. Um, but I'll go back at some point and sew round it. They probably won't. So let's feed this through here. And that through there. Turn it over. Now we've, you've got choices now. Because if you don't want to use this as like um, a tie that you're going to tighten things with. I uh, tighten the bag with. Oh, come here. There we go. 
you could tie it if you make it longer you could tie it into a bow but this one I'm just going to do as a tie so you could just tie it like this and then that's your bag if you're going to do that so it's not going to come undone um, so you're not going to be tightening it at all I'd maybe tie it into a double knot and put a few stitches just in the side seams just to hold it in place but if you do want to use it to draw up the bag that would make a bow actually at that length wouldn't it let's do a nice bow um, but this means you're going to undo it every time you open it I'll do. So then you've got that shape of bag. Let's get my bow the right way around. Like that. Nice bow. There. So that changes the shape of the bag. So you can either use it as a little tote or you can make that tie purposeful and tie it up. Or actually, you could leave it like that if you've got your snap. You can still get into it as well. So that, that's entirely up to you. That makes it a, a versatile little tote. I think that looks quite sweet. Um, oh, so that's going to watch this back. Going to set the half yard sling bag this afternoon. Oh, nice dawn. Share pictures, won't you, when you've made it. Um, just into, oh, morning, Christine. Late to the pod, we're making sausage rolls for a birthday buffet. Oh, how lovely. It's your birthday. Um, Oh, hi Shelley, thanks Debbie Lisa and everyone for a lovely morning. No, thank you. Uh, so pretty. And um, is that Cyan? Oh, Jane, sorry, in Ontario, off to work now. Have a lovely day at work today. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Um, what have we got? Peace, not war. Oh, hi, De oh, hi, peace, not war. <laughs> Linda loves the bag. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you like it. I think the fabric makes it, doesn't it? So remember, that was in the new fabric that we've got on today. This one I made from the, it's slightly narrower. I made this one up this morning and I thought I'm going to add an inch to the width. So I only used 12 inch square for that one, whereas this is 13 by 12. Um, but that is the Dutch heritage fabric with a coral lining on that one. But I think they're both very pretty and both very useful as well. They're, they're decent sizes. Um, if you make the straps longer as well, you could make it a shoulder bag too. It's rope. Sorry, I didn't see which one. You meant the handles on the yellow bag behind me. It's, it's just rope. We don't sell it. But if you have a look on Amazon, um, or cord, really thick cord, um, they should have it on there. Make the tie elasticate instead, then it just open and close without having to tie. That would be a good idea. I'd maybe stop the elastic at about six inches from the end, so it's not all elasticated, but that would work. Uh, right. Bedtime for Carol in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> Good night. See you again next week. Um, Sunny Law's birthday. I'll say happy birthday from us, Christine. Um, enjoy it. Did you get the doggy one? Enjoy them. Did you get the, uh, the, oh, the... Did I get the dodgy... Dodgy what? Did I get the dodgy what, Sarah? Is that dodgy? Well, I'm glad you like it, Brenda. Thank you, glad you like it. That's all right, Lisa. Nice that you joined us, thank you. Right, now I am going to be on Create and Craft tomorrow at, I think, 7, 9, 10, 12 and 2. Um, so if you would, old doggy, if you would like to come and join me, it's um, createandcraft.com. You can watch on the website, you can watch on, on your TV if you're in the UK as well. Um, be nice to get an email from you as well in one of my shows. Otherwise, I shall see you again on Wednesday afternoon here at four o'clock. Oh, hi, you're in Poland. Is it Ewa? Ewa? Nice to have you along. Uh, right, okay, thank you, Jean. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed that. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. I shall see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Presenting, Lisa, presenting. Selling next week on the 31st. I've got one hour at nine o'clock.